Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. Joining us in the next segment will be Steve Quayle. I have an amazing story up on Infowars.com about fraud in the IRS. Say it ain't so. I mean, of all people, would you expect the IRS a fraud? <laughs> I'm going to get to the details of that. But first, I want to continue with what I was talking about in the previous uh, segment about the Washington Post covering up for the failures of vaccines. They had to report this story, but they bury this stuff on the back pages. It is there. We need to shine the light on this story. We need to pass this around because they start out the story by saying, no, 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 understand the human vaccines are perfect. However, however, in farm animals, we can see that there are leaky vaccines. What do they mean by leaky vaccines? Well, this is a particular study uh, that was published uh, on Monday in PLOS Biology. These are researchers at Penn State University and people who are head of the Avian Viral Diseases Program at the Perbright Institute. They're looking at something called Merrick's disease. This is a herpes-like virus that infects chickens. They say it's highly contagious. Merrick's disease didn't used to be deadly. But now chicken farmers are seeing increasingly virulent strains in their broods. The people who did this study say they don't know whether the vaccines for the disease actually caused the virulent strains, the more virulent strains to develop. But according to their research, those more dangerous strains have developed and it's the existence of the vaccine that allows them to continue existing. Now, let's talk about these perfect vaccines, MMR, for example. Ignoring the issues of the things that they put into it, like formaldehyde and mercury and those sorts of things and the effects that it's going to have on you when you inject formaldehyde and mercury into your bloodstream or your child's bloodstream. We've talked about that at length. Understand that in terms of safety and effectiveness, in terms of leakiness, for example, we've had studies in New York in 2011. We've had the medical profession talk about the puzzlement of how patient zero in a measles outbreak had been twice vaccinated. And all of the four people who contacted measles from patient zero who had been twice vaccinated had also been vaccinated. How could that happen, they say? And yet we see these stories over and over and over again. Herd mentality is all they're selling us. There is no such thing as herd immunity, it's simply a herd mentality. You can see it in real herds of animals, but they won't admit that it happens with humans. Now, to the IRS fraud that I mentioned. The IRS used instant messaging system to hide internal communications. They had their own parallel messaging system. Imagine that. Where would they get an idea like that? From Hillary Clinton? No, this kind of corruption, the systemic gaming of the system, this hiding their criminal activity is systemic throughout the federal government. Here's yet another case of the IRS. This is reported by ATR.org. The IRS used a wholly separate instant messaging system that automatically deleted office communications according to documentation released by the House Oversight Committee on Monday. The system appears to have been purposely, purposely used by agency officials responsible for the targeting of conservative nonprofits in order to evade public scrutiny. Now, these are the same people this is Lois Lerner's gang, okay? These are the same people that were targeting Tea Party organizations. And we just reported earlier this last, last couple of days how they were uh, assessing fines to donors to these organizations, giving them a 35% gift donation tax, which has been overturned by the Supreme Court, which hasn't been used since the 1980s. They say the office known as Office Communication Server, or OCS, was used by IRS officials, including many in the exempt organizations unit, headed by Lois Lerner. They told us they destroyed the hard drives. We said, baloney, you haven't lost that stuff. You've got backup procedures. And eventually they said, oh, yeah, that's right. And now we find out they had a completely parallel messaging system. This was intentional Fraud, criminal activity by the IRS. Stay with it. And we're going to be going to Steve Quayle for this hour. We have him on the line ready to join us. Before we do, I want to let you know that uh, this week we have free shipping at all the on all the products at InfoWarsLife.com. That's just through the end of this week. That's the end of July. We have free shipping on everything that's there. So it's a good time to stock up on stuff that frequently goes out of stock. Things like Survival Shield X2. 
For me, taking it every day is a no-brainer. I take it every morning. It's easy to do because it's in liquid form. I know that I need it because it's a vital supplement. We all need iodine. It used to be added to our food. Many of those foods have now had that removed. We need to make sure that we have sufficient iodine in our daily diet. It's one thing that you can pick up now while it's in stock. And, of course, it's not going to go bad on your shelf. Survival Shield X2, you can get free shipping right now at InfoWarsLife.com. Take a look at the 400 reviews that are there. That's how I make my decisions when I buy other products. I look at the reviews on the website, and you can see there that over 99% of the people uh, who have put those reviews on there, over 400 reviews, over 99% of the people say they would recommend it to friend or family. And we've been reading those uh, testimonials that people have put up there, their comments, pretty amazing. What some of the people have said it has helped them to do because you never know when you've got a nutritional deficiency how it's going to manifest itself in your life. That's one of the things we need to be aware of is what the vital nutrients that we need are in our life and take control of your health. You can do that at InfoWarsLife.com. And again, we have free shipping on everything at the store for the next two days through the end of the month. Joining us now is Steve Quayle. And, of course, Steve is uh, no stranger to the Alex Jones show. He's on frequently with Alex Jones. We want to talk to him today. Steve, I'd like to talk to you about uh, economics. And I know that you're uh, very knowledgeable about gold and silver, about commodities. Mm -hmm. uh, people can get information about that on your website. I, we've seen a massive collapse, Steve, and uh, just this week in the Chinese stock market yet again. Eight and a half percent decline. A lot of people have been wiped out because they bought this stuff on margin. They were told by the Chinese government that they were covered. They were going to be safe. They trusted the government, they said. And now they are ruined. When we look at precious metals like gold and silver, most people will get those as a store of value. We know that the price fluctuations that we see in those things are really the value of gold and silver versus this fiat currency that's floating around by the central banks. So it's really kind of a fluctuation in people's confidence in the fiat currency, not so much a fluctuation in the value of gold and silver. But tell us what you think is behind the fluctuations that we've seen in gold and silver in the last month or so. Well, let's even take it. First of all, thanks for letting me come on and be, you know, on with you guys and, uh, you know, best to Alex overseas. But what we're seeing is a total manipulation, but also a total separation from the physical uh, manipulated price of the metals, David, versus the actual physical acquisition cost. In other words, the notional value of gold and silver versus the real value of gold and silver as expressed by what's available. Uh, you're ago, one of the things that troubled me was I, I would try and get the radio audience to understand that manipulation can only last so long. And the idea that people buy gold and silver is number one for capital preservation, but also at some point that we are going to see the necessity as more and more of Big Brother and the, what I call the cyborgian uh, controllers of the planet take over. It's going to be very tough, as it says in the Bible, to buy, rent, sell, or trade, except you take the mark of the beast. Now, the war on cash is a war on individual rights. Everything, and I think that's critical, is even as every store begins to get any place that takes a credit card will be asked to update into a point of sales terminal that's hooked into Big Brother. And for the people that may not understand this is that the idea is to kill any financial freedom outside of what you are allowed or permission to buy. So what we're seeing is a paper market being totally manipulated. The Chinese said they had so far, you know, they had so less gold holdings than everybody knows that they have. Uh, one of my sources happens to be a Beijing gold trader who's talked about, and this is something that most people don't talk about concerning China's gold holdings, are uh, the great gold holdings of Genghis and Kublai Khan. Uh, the tr the literally caves filled with gold. So the reason why the Chinese, uh, I would say this, fudged a little, lied a lot on their gold holdings is because it was becoming too obvious that China, obviously in the in in going for monetizing the renminbi or the yuan, they they hadn't got everything they wanted to get up until that point. So here's how it works. 
the only in the United States can markets sell what they don't possess. It's called naked shorting. And with the federal government backing either Goldman Sachs and or J.P. Morgan, in other words, they can drive the price of gold or silver they don't possess down and make up the difference in people who short the market in cash. That'd be like a, a, a Texas cattleman selling, you know, what the going rate for cows is. Let's say it's you know twenty five hundred, two thousand, whatever it is, and some guy coming on the scene and saying he'll sell a thousand or he'll sell all his cattle for a thousand dollars a head. Well. That's not uh, possible. And so when you say, okay, I'll take delivery, the guy that's basically shorting the sale of cattle says, well, I don't have it, but I'll make it up in cash. So what we're seeing is what I would say is a complete disconnect for the paper market versus the physical market. And that's why, you know, David, 100,000 gold uh, eagles sold in July, and we're not actually through with the month of July until Friday. Uh, silver eagles have been put on uh, uh, suspended or mint allocation. What most people don't understand is this. The, the availability of newly mined gold and silver is a function of the cost of uh, producing it and getting it out of the mines. And what a lot of people do is they will buy up a lot of production in the futures market, especially the banks that loan the money to the mines, and the mines are forced to sell their future production at lower prices. Well, if you're a crooked bank and boy, those two things go hand in hand, crooked and bank, then the idea is you're going to lock in the mine's production in order to make a killing as the prices rise. So that's kind of the simplest version I know. So people are acquiring it. Obviously, being in this business, meaning the metals business for 30-some years, I can tell you this, that the secondary market now is the prime source of physical metals. That means that as the mint shut down, whether it's the Royal Canadian Mint, the Perth Mint in Australia, the U.S. Mint, and, and basically they don't have anything to sell into the market, then you have to go into the secondary market. And the real prices of gold and the real prices of silver are up around 20, 22 bucks an ounce for silver, and the real price of gold is somewhere between 12 and $1,300. That's just in the United States. That's interesting because I saw some. I saw an article uh, just a week or so ago talking about how seventy five percent of the people who had got silver uh, uh, futures had cashed in their contracts to take physical possession of that silver. They said that was a very unusual move, as well as one buyer coming in with a, a purchase that was over fifty million dollars. I know when we had the first crash of the Chinese market, silver trading in mint coins, as you pointed out, the, the short supply of those. I think people are using uh, the uh, the the decline in the price of these metals to accumulate them, and they're looking at uh, gold possibly they say falling to a thousand fifty per ounce if the Fed's hike the rate today. That's a prediction by uh, Christopher Woods. Uh, do you think that this is uh, what's happening with a lot of people that they're actually uh, trying to take possession of the short supply that's there? That even though this is is falling for whatever reason, a lot of people are starting to move to accumulate their position at a lower price. Absolutely, and the uh, data guys who uh, have been doing an amazing job, and that's one of the the most uh, amazing groups of people in the gold any trade committee. Uh, they've they've been around for twenty years. the The idea is this: is that somebody is driving the price down. There's only two people that can drive the prices down. That big, and it would be a sovereign wealth fund of either China or Russia, but they're not. They're buyers of gold. So it has to be J.P. Morgan, and also it has to be Goldman Sachs. The huge position, I think you've probably commented on or are aware of, David, that J.P. Morgan controls 95% of the commodities market worldwide. So let me just throw something out. If you're buying metals and you own 95% of the futures contract, and whatever, however much money it's worth, you can say trillions. Remember, they can buy on margin at, at such incredible rates, and the federal government will give them the money to put up. Now, obviously, it's just printed cash. So if you were expecting a higher price in all commodities and knowing that the dollar, by the very design of the Obama administration, they want to destroy the dollar, knowing that the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China are basically saying, uh, you know, we're going to have our own currency, our own clearing of international transfer of funds. And, and basically, the same contempt now that is uh, 
generated towards the United States due to, you know, the current occupant in, in that place called Washington, a disgusting uh, city. And, and again, I coined a term, and I think you'll appreciate this, political piranhas on the Potomac of self-indulgence. Absolutely. I, yeah, I, I just don't... Yeah, I can't. I can't put anything more into contempt. Okay, uh, the, I, we could talk sometime. You've probably done it. You can take the parallels of the fall of Rome. You can take the parallels of the fall of just about any nation in history, and and we're just repeating not only their stupidity but their greed, their avarice, and their basically perversion. And, and when I say that, I, I want people to understand something. The history that we are seeing now, look at the United States. Five years ago, actually, I'm sorry, the day, the year that Obama got elected, I made the statement, you mark my words, that the United States will become a hissing sound in the nostrils of the countries of the world. Hang on right there, Steve. We've got to go to break. We're talking to Steve Quayle, stevequayle.com, one of the original founders of the PrEP movement. He's been a talk radio host for over 20 years. Saying 20 years ago what he was just saying right now, that the Chinese and Russians are going to ultimately back their currencies in gold. When we come back, Steve, I'd like to talk to you about what you think about Texas's move with the gold deposit. North to Alaska, a gold rush. We're talking to Steve Quill, SteveQuill.com. We've been talking about precious metals. What's going on? What's going on with the stock markets, with the economies across the world? Steve Quayle was the lone voice 20 years ago saying that the Chinese and Russians would ultimately back their currencies with gold. Today, we see that Texas is talking about repatriating their gold. Did anybody see that coming? Uh, they're talking about setting up a gold depository, a kind of Fort Knox, and allowing people to store their precious metals there and then essentially write uh, checks against them or whatever. Steve, I haven't seen the details of this, but what do you think about this proposal? I, I like a lot of the stuff that I've seen from Governor Abbott here in Texas. He was just uh, took office this year. He's had the courage to do things that other people wouldn't do. One of these things that he's stepped forward to do is to say, look, a lot of people are very concerned about the integrity of our fiat currency and the Federal Reserve. People are understanding what's going on. We see the shaky markets, and they want to get the physical gold back here in Texas, and they're taking steps to do that. What do you think about that? Well, number one, I think your governor is a remarkable man. I think he literally is the, in my opinion, now, and obviously I'm in Montana, but I, I got to share this. When I see Governor Abbott's uh, actions to defend and to put the well-being of Texans ahead of everything else, I'll tell you what, in my opinion, he's not only a governor, he's a statesman. Yes, exactly. To and I mean, I'm telling you what, there's nobody, and, and I like your attorney general a lot, too. And, and why I say this is, you know, David, being in talk radio for all the years I have, and obviously talking about the subject matter, everything that we've talked about is that, you know, used to be conspiracy theorists. And I'll say this, if someone would simply look up the word conspiracy, conspiracy they'll know that it's just two or more people agreeing, usually surreptitiously, to bring about a manipulated result. Obviously, people can call it the Hegelian dialectic, back to Texas wanting its goal. I think Governor Abbott and, and the, uh, obviously, administration of Texas realizes that storing gold with the Fed isn't a guarantee of having gold stored with the Fed. What yes. will happen is the Fed will have to go out and buy that gold on the open market, okay, or deny the uh, request. The idea of Texas, now this is something most people don't know, that obviously when the hunts cornered the silver market, and that's not a really fair uh, statement, they wanted to do the same thing with silver back in 79-80 that you know, Governor Abbott wants to pretty much do now with gold. And number one, Texas's gold is Texas's gold. That's why I would rec I would recommend every Texan seriously, if you have gold or silver deposited with a third party depository, that you you set up a self directed IRA and get that money into your possession. As long as it's U.S. Uh, gold or silver products and meet the criteria, you can do that. Why do I say that? Because obviously, I want everyone to think. And David, we. We've heard so much about cyber attacks. We've heard so much about, let's just say this, less than honorable banking practices. We've heard that uh, the attacks on the the infrastructure, the cyber infrastructure, are almost uh, endless, and and they they just don't relent. So the point that I'm trying to make is this: 
if you simply look, and let me ask you this question. Um, I obviously know that you practice what you preach, but but if the banks went down on Friday, your credit and debit cards didn't work, and there was an announcement on Monday that we had sustained a cyber attack that is worse than anything in history, how long, and this is obviously rhetorical to you, how long do you think most people could last if they're paying for a whatever a glass, and I don't drink coffee, but not that I have anything against it, I just never acquired a taste for it, but what's a cup of coffee cost now at Starbucks or whoever sells coffee? Three bucks? Oh yeah, nobody is going to last very long because we've got this whole thing called, uh, in the supply chain, uh, where they deliver, it's just in time inventory, they deliver everything just in time. Nobody carries any deep inventory. None of the stores carry any deep inventory. So all the cities are going to be out of food in just a couple of days. That's the Absolutely. real danger that we have with everybody. Yeah. But everybody's going to be out of any way to uh, barter unless they have the precious metal. Here's a question I get. I, I get asked so many times, and I don't know why so few address it. The idea of anybody that believes in freedom, the idea of those who would be, quote, red listers, those who would be even blue listers, the medium of exchange that has uh, stood the test of time and tyranny has always been the precious metals. It didn't matter if it was Vietnam during the war, Germany prior to that. What's happening now is a virtual world of currency, Bitcoin and all of its uh, clones. Yes. But if you look at that, it is contrary to even basically you can't, if you can't touch it, you don't own it. That's right, because if the uh, if the web goes down, if they, they take down the internet, you can't get at those cyber currencies. Even though we're seeing a lot of movement and talk about blockchain, even though we reported yesterday that NASDAQ is going to start recording all transactions this fall in blockchain, you still won't be able to get to your cashless cash you will be cashless. Stay we're with us. We'll be right back with Steve Quayle. Today we're talking to Steve Quayle, stevequayle.com. No stranger to many in the prepping industry. He was a, one of the first radio hosts to get into uh, educating people about what they needed to prepare. And we were talking about that in the last segment. What happens if the grid goes down? What happens to your cash if you have a cashless society? Even if you have it in a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, can you get to that? And then even more importantly... Do you have the things at home that you need to survive? We have now in stock, and of course, we sell these products at InfoWarsLife.com. I believe Steve also sells uh, X2 Nascent Iodine. Survival Shield is now in stock. You need to stock up on these things. You need to prepare while you can, while it's in stock, while the grid is not down. Prepare on the things that you need for your health, for your family. Some of that can be nutrients that you have, things that are going to protect your health, that are going to be used to fight infection. But also look to how you can prepare for yourself in terms of growing some of your own food. It's not just stockpiling stuff, but it's also growing your own food. But uh, Steve, your comments about uh, iodine, I know you carry it there at, at your website as well. Yes, I do. And I got to share something with everybody. I'll give someone the most important word on why they need survival shield right now. It's called Fukushima. What is astonishing to me is the, if you look at the history of radiation, I used to write books on this and stuff, so let me just give it to everyone simply. The total lies about uh, the radiation that is coming out of Fukushima, even plutonium, a, a quick Wikipedia search on plutonium will show the half-life of that, and it's probably one of the most devastating poisons in the world. Now, I'm talking about plutonium, not polonium. When we're talking about cesium-137, strontium-90, and all of the radioactive isotopes that are left over after either a nuclear uh, weapons detonation or also a nuclear meltdown, David, the greatest tragedy in retrospect will be when people look back and see the mass media's complicity in covering up what will turn into a pretty close to, not extinction level, but a multi, multi, multi hundred million people dying. Radiation is cumulative, so I will tell everyone, especially with children, especially if you live on the West Coast, I know that you guys sell out of Survival Shield you know, uh, from time to time, but this is the most critical time, please, to get it, Survival Shield, because the, uh, the, the first thing that, that, you know, the radio, excuse me, the radioactivity will do is begin to mess with kids and uh, their thyroid. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in essence, right. that's 
and, and, and childhood cancers now up and down the West Coast. That's another cover-up as long and also abortion. When I say this, the, uh, you know, in, in, uh, what I would call is, um, what's it called? Miscarriage. I'm sorry. I was looking for a word. Miscarriages due to so many people being exposed to this. Now, now let's talk about this, too. It is important that people understand, and I want to go back to this, radiation is cumulative. In Billings, Montana, we've got some of the highest radiation that can only be related to the jet stream. Uh, people need to find uh, the uh, sites on the Internet that, that basically monitor that stuff in, in real time. But again, Survival Shield X2 is an absolute must for anybody, by the way, that not only lives on the West Coast, but across the country. I mean, all you got to do is watch the weather patterns, and I'm horrified. I'm disgusted, I'll use anger instead of another word, at the complete lack of integrity. I'll say this, I say this, and this is no apology to anybody, mass media is complicit in mass murder by not covering Fukushima. Oh, remember, And, and we were talking remember. about this, Steve, we've had the federal government go out and buy millions of doses of iodine because they wanted to be protected against the contingency of a massive nuclear catastrophe. But of course, what we see with Fukushima is this continuous ongoing. It's like this dripping faucet filling up the bucket. It's not like somebody taking the bucket and just throwing it at you. And it's a kind of iodine that's not a healthy form of iodine. They simply give you that iodine so that your thyroid will take it up quickly so that it doesn't absorb the radioactive cesium and other elements that would damage and, and your thyroid that would give you cancer. So it's a way of blocking further absorption of these other harmful elements. So it's an emergency preparation. But you need this, you need a good iodine to protect your health. And if you take it on a regular basis, then you're protected from this continual leaking of radiation that is not going away, that keeps coming from Fukushima, as you point out. It's cumulative. It, it doesn't. It, is. it isn't like you can forget what you. <laughs> your body is still storing what it got last week, last year, three years ago. It's critical, and iodine is so. Ne it's a necessity in the human metabolism. I think I heard in the background Alex talking that obviously so many foods that used to be iodine, but again, it's the form of iodine that's critical. So I would encourage everyone, and and I don't know right offhand, David. I can't think right now because I'm going eight thousand miles an hour. But there's a specific network that will show you the radiation across the country by stations that monitor it, and uh, I'll send that to you, and you can get it up on your website. But let's talk about, again, the lies that have been broadcast by mainstream media, the complicity in the non-covering of, I would say, extinction-level or, or semi-extinction-level events. What makes anybody think that they will ever hear the truth in mainstream media? Okay, but I still have people that call me and say, well, I watch Fox. Even my own son, uh, my eldest son watches Fox. And I said, that's, that's like basically you got a choice. You got a choice between uh, warm vomit, you know, red and <laughs> red hot vomit, okay? Okay? And what you're just taking is lukewarm vomit, but at the end of the day, you still got vomit, okay? Yeah. It's someone else, and I'm sorry, but I, I, I'm trying, David, to fight for words that will have enough meaning to shock uh, what I would say those who are so bound from being able to really get this, to shock them and to recognize it. The most disgusting thing for most people, of course, unless you were in Rome during the binge cycle, that also led to their destruction. When, when, a, when a nation becomes totally self-absorbed, and for the record, I, and I, I'm saying this, look at this nation that's become selfie-oriented. I watched mm -hmm. a guy. You know, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, I live in Montana, you guys live in Texas, so you see this all the time, but people just totally, uh, how should I say this, not even in a reality-based world, just going through life, pressing on their cell phones, or driving on their cell phones, uh, chatting, chitting, and whatever else they're doing on their cell phones, Twitter, flitter, flutter. Alex and I, and, 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 and I don't think people realize what we were trying to tell people years ago when Marcus Wolf was hired by, in those days, I believe it was FEMA, to basically set up Department of Homeland Security. This was the, and, and setting up Facebook, okay? Isn't it fascinating that now we have Facebook being pretty much Skynet. I think it just uh, surpassed the, the uh, capitalization for Google. And Alex and 
and I were warning people. Do you remember those days? Warning people. Oh, yeah. This is a self, uh, uh, self-building self intelligence dossier. Well, Steve, I and think now, it's a very broad base where they did it. If you remember the first reality TV program that was out there, it was called Big Brother. It was yep. very popular in the UK. It came over here. And I think that kind of prepared this generation, this younger generation, to see that if they were constantly exposing their life to other people, making their life an open book, having cameras everywhere, they're exp- setting them up for this kind of a, a selfie mentality, they could become a celebrity, at least, at the very least, with their circle of friends on Facebook or whatever. I think that has really driven this whole mentality uh, starting with these reality shows that we see rampant. You're talking about the, the liberal media and how they're complicit in covering up what's going on with Fukushima. I was talking earlier about Camille Paglia. She's a liberal feminist. She's pro-abortion, and she was absolutely outraged at how the liberal media has covered up these videos about Planned Parenthood selling body parts. How they're not covering that. She wants to distance herself from that. I mean, she's an honest liberal. I mean, we disagree with her on the fundamental issue, but she's outraged that they would cover. She's outraged about what has been exposed, and she's outraged about the cover-up. And so when I look at this, one of the things that is really amazing to me is how not even the Pope has talked about this. We've had uh, people in, in talk radio talking about it. We've had some Republicans now talking about it. Of course, Mitch McConnell and John Boehner don't, are shutting down uh, bills to uh, try to deal with that. But even the Pope, who has built, the Catholic Church has been so focused on the issue of abortion and on family, he is totally ignoring this issue and focusing on world government, isn't he? Oh, absolutely. And I think it's critical that people understand this, that for the first time in history, he's going to be coming to the United States to address what? The United Nations, and he's going to be addressing the U.S. Congress on September 24th. What's astounding to me and astonishing is his statements concerning a one-world government, a one-world currency, currency redistribution, which, by the way, is the Marxist platform. And he's also talking about uh, uh, that basically all roads lead to heaven. Now, obviously, the Catholic Church has been a Christian uh, church, and, and, and for, for the centuries that it's been, let's just say this, in existence. But now there's something else happening. And, and I want to tell people, if you want to know where this thing's going, Tom Horn, and I, I don't know if you guys have ever had him on, but he wrote a book called Exo Vaticana. Tom Horn and Chris Putnam stated before the previous pope resigned that he was going to resign. Well, they were called from every world newspaper, and uh, uh, everybody wanted to know how they knew that. It was based on Vatican prophecies, not Protestant propaganda. Okay, I've heard that. Well, that's all Protestant propaganda. Uh Uh-uh. It's it's Catholicism in its uh, prophetic sense. Now we've got, basically, coming before our eyes, just in September, we've got a rabbi saying that the Messiah is coming, uh, you know, uh, I think September 12th, uh, and that he'll be at the end. Now, again, Jesus said this. This is important for Christians to understand. Jesus said, I came, you received me not, but another will come claiming to be me, and him you will receive. So, again, to make it easy for everybody, Antichrist before Jesus Christ, okay? Yes. Then we hear about the Shemitah year and the seven-year cycles. Those end on September 13th. 5776 is the, the year of Lucifer, Anno Lucis. The U.N. resolution for Palestine to become a state, September 15th. Jade Helm, which began on July 15th, supposedly ends on September 15th. That's not true. It will be ongoing from this point forward, just not uh, called by that. As you know, David, there's so many operations. There's so many things going on. And what people don't uh, understand, and this is important, these guys have war gaming. It's like the old movie War Games, but that was set more in a, a nuclear environment. They have algorithms that are figuring out, for instance, when you and I go and talk on talk radio, Alex, whoever, they're going to take a glossary of terms. They're going to check every single email. They're, they're building, if you will, a artificially uh, uh, monitored intelligence database that will begin to tweak all of their equations, garbage in, garbage out, death in, death out. So the fact that CERN, 
that will uh, be firing at full power on September 23rd, 24th. It's almost like September, which, by the way, is the ninth month. Remember, everybody, 9-11, Madonna's concert comes up 9-23. And it's the fascinating thing that all of the events that have happened in September are now scheduled. And this is like the culmination of seven-year cycles. So uh, I would say this. People have a limited time to get there's already and, and you know I, I was one of the founders of the survival movement the survival food preppers movement whatever you want to call it and if 400 people i mean surely there are 400 people listening to this show decide you know i better get a year's worth of food there are so few quote prep shops and i know your sponsor you know they can't handle it because the manufacturers for instance mountain house Mm -hmm. And also, uh, um, Alpine Air, and for the record, I was one of Alpine Air's very first uh, retail clients. The point being is, is that there's just no production. Now when you take manipulated warfare, weather warfare, and you see Fukushima killing pretty much the Pacific Ocean, when you see all of the drought and the famine being initiated, and that's weather warfare, simply this, people will be starved into FEMA camps. And going back to what we talked about, when their credit cards don't work, when their debit cards don't work, and we're informed, well, guess what? My guess is is that when we're informed there's been a cyber attack upon the banking system and everybody's accounts get emptied, that basically the people who hired the cyber attacks will end up with all the money, okay? So if we're going to be raped, we're going to be pillaged, and we're going to be plundered. And I, I coined a term, a little statement, rape, pillage, and plunder, they're taking the United States under. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we just had a report today about how the uh, the Republicans are pushing a bill for Obama to take away people's passports without charging them with anything, without finding them guilty of a crime. When people look at the NDAA and they had indefinite detention by the military without you being charged or found guilty, understand that if they're going to take away your passport, if they're going to put you on a no-fly list and they're not going to tell you about it, it's going to be a secret judicial procedure, that is essentially an incremental enactment of the NDAA. If they start taking away people's passports, first you stop them from getting out of the border, and then all you have to do is just start making the net a little smaller each time. Steve, we had... Uh, Wesley Clark talking about how people who are disloyal to the government, who criticize the government, he says, yeah, that's their right. But we locked people up for that in World War II, and we can lock people up for that now. We need to do that before people get violent. If we even see a tendency where we think at some point in the future they might become someone we define as a radical, if we think that they might become violent, that's going to be justification for us to, quote unquote, in his words, segregate people to take them out of society at the same time we got mike mccall putting out a a bill that would as 2899 i believe is the number if i remember that correctly that would essentially put fema in charge of identifying people who are potentially violent radicals propagandizing them funding grants and when you got wesley clark talking about segregating people and you got fema being given grants to identify people pre-crime i think we all ought to be very concerned we can see the handwriting on the wall can't we steve yep and let me share this what we're watching is the uh charge de faire the and the uh, order of the day uh, uh pre-crime but also of uh, what we're, i think most people had better realize this if they fit into those categories what they're doing is building a case for your execution yes. my execution yes. people may get i won't say that word they may get angry at me but that's the bottom line okay by the way david the, the website thanks stefan www.netc n-e-t-c as in charlie.com if you, if you look at it, I don't know if you can pull it up right now or they can put it up on the screen for you. The entire West Coast has incredibly high readings. They must, people, you must get uh, nascent iodine. But if you look at right the there. East Coast and then you look across Texas. Hang on, Steve. We've got to take a break. We're going to be right back. Steve Quayle, stevequayle.com. And we have with us Steve Quayle, stevequayle.com. We've been talking about a wide variety of issues. Just before the break, we were talking about Jade Helm, about the things that we're concerned about, the growing trend. It's just, it's just part of a trend. This is part of an increasing uh, trend that we see in terms of mastering the human domain, geospatial intelligence, human domain analytics, activity-based intelligence. Steve, there was a report that came out in June 
Visualizing the Tactical Ground Battlefield in the Year 2050. This is by the U.S. Army Research Lab. And I just want to tell people and get your reactions. Some of the targets, uh, some, of the, some of the topics that are here about micro-targeting of individuals. They're not talking about regions. They're not talking about uh, buildings or vehicles. They're talking about individuals that they want to target. So they have to map you out in order to do that. That's what this is all about. They want to use misinformation as a weapon. That's why they have special forces involved, because special forces specialize in unconventional warfare. That is, using information, misinformation as a weapon. Cognitive modeling of the opponent, automated decision making, where they take all this information that they have, put it into the computer, use AI to finger the targets that they have, and then take action with them, micro-targeting them. This is where this is all headed. And when you look at the weapons that they're working on, what they think they're going to have in a couple of decades, we've got robots everywhere, killer robots, who are going to take that information and make their decisions on it. Swarms of robots Automated superhumans who have implants in them, who have been genetically modified. Steve, this is like something out of the book of Revelations, isn't it? It is, and I detailed this, and, and again, I detailed it in Genetic Armageddon, and that was written 15 years ago. Then I just put out my new book, Xenogenesis, turning or you know, see, uh, changing men into monsters. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that what's important for people to understand, David, and this is really critical, is, is that the selective targeting, we've already seen Andrew Breitbart murdered that way, and I don't make any apologies for that. We've already seen Tom Clancy murdered that way. We have the individual... Don't forget Michael Hastings, too. Yes, yeah. forgive me, Michael Hastings. Mm -hmm. And the idea of... 20 years ago, Frank Dukes, D-U-K-E-S, I'm sorry, D-U-X, but pronounced Dukes, I interviewed him on talk radio. He was Bill Casey's basically, uh, you know, the guy, Bill Casey, Central Intelligence Agency director at the time, was sent to clean up messes, okay? And Frank Dukes is a, a famous, famous, famous martial artist, probably the most famous martial artist in the world, though people probably don't know who he is. He wrote the book Secret Man on my radio program. 20 years ago, he said that they had the technology to identify in a stadium full of people from outer space individual thermal signatures and target those thermal signatures. Now, they just announced, I think, on the London Daily Mail that they said, well, they've just recently come up with a way of thermal fingerprinting in the dark. That's such nonsense. Yeah. That technology has been around forever. So when you talk about micro-targeting, outside of the grace of God, the supernatural protection of God, uh, you know, basically... There is no way to, or excuse me, there's nowhere to run at some point in the future. So that um, basically mandates that we all, number one, get our hearts right with Jesus, those of us who are Christians, and those who aren't Christians that say, I don't want to hear that talk. You better understand the only person that ever told us about all this stuff happening, one world government, one world political body, one world currency, one world religion, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, interestingly enough, the Terminator himself just called for a one world religion. Did you see that? Oh, yeah. No, I didn't see that, that he was calling for. But it it concerns me to see the Pope calling for one world government. So we got, we got Absolutely. this Nazi sympathizer, Schwarzenegger, calling for one world religion. And then we got the Pope calling for one world government. That's all the time we've got. Thank you for joining us. Steve Quayle, stevequayle.com. Join us tonight at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern.